Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I'm gonna have a go at doing some welding. This is an Air Products Integra cylinder. What's the cylinder? There's the quick coupling with a flashback arrestor built into it. It just clips on. And here's the regulators. That's the regulator gauge, the regulator's in behind. I've been having a bit of trouble with these cylinders, so the issue I have is that this one here, the acetylene, the gauge is quite easy to read. So you can see there it goes up to 36 and it's in sensible divisions. That's 8 and so everything, they're in two, each of the red graduations is 2 psi. So let's, uh, let's open up my acetylene. It's full open. Let's open the cylinder. I can hear it hissing. And let's look at the pressure there. It's at about four and I want it down at two because I've changed to a number one tip for this job. So let's just turn it right down. And listen to the hiss. That's two PSI. Now it's very quiet. So let's close that. The oxygen is my issue and we'll zoom in on the oxygen now. So that's the uh, settling closed. Let's open up the oxygen. So over here, this one goes up to 25 bar or 360 PSI. In the same area, it's about 10 times the scale. So the first number is 40. So that black line above my fingernail is 20. And each of these divisions is either five, four or five. It's impossible to tune it into two. So what I've been doing is doing it by ear. So open up the gas, you can hear it. And this will be set at four the way it was for the other one. So that's almost off. Screw it back in a bit, the regulator. The regulator's just here on the side. Just in there, there's a knob. There it is. The grey button on the end. The button doesn't do anything. So let's listen to that now. Turn that off. It's the oxygen. We'll just turn off the oxygen. Now it's off. And open the acetylene. I've been doing this by ear. I think they both sound the same. So we'll go in and try welding with that. I'm now inside at the vise. I'm going to take a piece of electrical tape, cut that, and we'll take the lens off a sunglass, sunglass lens, and I'm going to tape that over the camera, and hopefully you'll be able to see the weld. So let's get to it, I'll get my apron on and my goggles. can see we're still on a carburizing flame there we turn up turn up the oxygen just until the tip there reduces into a little cone it's flared up somewhat on the screen I'll put a second lens over it and see if it helps so it's a lot darker there so once we get the light in from this oh yeah you can see that a lot better now so there's too much oxygen on that no too much too much acetylene, need a bit more oxygen. And there you can see the little cone in the center. Right, let's see how it goes. That looks okay now. I might be able to turn it down a bit. So not, there's a little puddle forming. That's all I want. I'm just going to trace this around. It's very nice. Change my angle because I'm on a tube. Take it a flame away. I'm just making very gentle circular patterns. And this is the reason I wanted to get back into oxyacetylene welding from ARC, which is what I was using before. This is thin wall bicycle tube. I don't know what it would be, half a mil, something like that. 
But you, you can weld this with arc, but it's a bit of a nightmare, and arc's smoky and dirty and noisy. see there the only way to describe it I've seen in a book is when you've got it right when you've got the mix of gases right it looks like a little pool of butter and my weld pool there is about six or seven mil in diameter it looks like I've got a little bit of a hole form in there I would have to fill that up with a uh, rod if I had a bit of rod and but I'll do the next run with rod with filler this is just for me to see I'm probably at a bit too steep of an angle. I could probably turn down the gas and have a tighter angle. And this flame, more like that. We're almost back to the beginning. Quite pleased with that now. I was struggling with these Integra cylinders, I mentioned it in a previous video, I think, uh, that especially with that oxygen gauge, it's very hard to dial in the oxygen and I was trying to do it visually, but once you start to do it with your ear, you can do quite well. This is a number one tip, and this is a bit of 2.4mm two, two welding rod I think, so let's try a little bit of welding here, let's push that over here. I'm in the center, hope you can see it. There's a bit of scale on this, I haven't swept it back with a flap disc. Increase the size of that weld pool before I put in a bit more. It's welding lovely. So the reason I got these Integra cylinders was because of the built in regs. I saw that as being an advantage and the quick release because I don't do much welding. But when I do, I don't want to have to haul something out like the arc welders in a cupboard. And then you've got to put on your mask and you've got to put on your gloves and arc welding you need you really need both gloves on and for arc welding you really need to be fully clothed as well to do it you see some guys doing it with just the t-shirt on but that's a mugs game whereas oxyacetylene welding in some ways it's a lot safer you know there's always the risk of like flammable gas but if you can live with that risk you're all right The long-term risk from arc welding is different. The electric arc is the same as the sun, it'll make you go blind. Well, it won't make you go blind, but it'll give you arc eye. I'm just here today welding on this little bit of pipe. Am I nearly back at the start yet? No, not quite. It's so peaceful. You get a flame there, tip of that flame is what? Three and a half thousand degrees Celsius? Something crazy, I don't know what it is. And it's four inches from my glove. Just get a longer piece of rod there. a little bit. Like if I was doing this with a standard arc welding rod in my arc welder that I bought in Lidl that has very poor adjustment, I can tell you we'd have burnt through this a few times and we'd be trying to patch it up. Now we're getting back to the beginning. Those sparks are either the scale on the metal
They're either the scale on the metal or they're the copper from the rod. And so you're gonna to struggle to see that now with those sunglasses on, so let's get them off. So this is the one that I just did, I think. This one here, pointing the flame at. And then the one here is the one that I did with no filler, so it's kind of up and down. So this one is the first one that I did here. And then this is the one that I've just done. You know, they're not beautiful, but I haven't welded in years. And so getting this up on the number one tip, it's ideal for this kind of welding on small, small thin wall tube. I don't know if it's any reference for you there, but it's just bicycle metal, quite thin. So I'll give it another run with one sunglass lens on it rather than two. So that's one lens. Get my glove back on. I'll show you a little trick I've got for holding my filler rods. Let's see, are we in the picture? We are. Okay. That's it, it's getting warm and it's about to form a pool. So get my rod heated a bit. I suspect that it's the copper coming off that rod. It's a copper coated rod. It really is very peaceful welding with oxyacetylene. Apart from these little sparks. The only thing that I would say, you know, those cylinders kind of bring it into the 21st century somewhat. Not that there's anything wrong with having your own regs, but it's a, it's a bit of an ordeal, unless you're using it every day, it's a bit of an ordeal to set it up. So those regs make life a lot easier, but uh, the fact that the oxygen is so poor to adjust, it's a bit silly. I have asked Air Products technical department for guidance on it, but uh, well, that was two days ago, so they've, they contacted me back and I told them about the problem and I haven't told them that I was doing it this way. I've only been doing it with, by tuning it in by ear for the last couple of days. Yeah, so there's a bit of contamination in there because uh, that was where I joined one welding rod end to another, one filler rod end to another. How are we doing? I've gone a bit stray. I'm starting to kind of come over at a bit of an angle here. If you were welding a, a cut pipe, of course, this wouldn't be an issue. You'd have a line to follow, it wouldn't be going all off to one side. Need a bit of a longer rod, I'm getting too close to my fingers there. Get a bit of heat back in here. There we go, there's the weld pool forming. Get a bit of heat into that rod as well, there we go. Back to the start after a bit of a deviation there. You can see like it's not fast, but it is peaceful. So gas, gas off, acetylene and then oxygen this time. Sometimes I do it the other way, but I'm not too worried. Now, that weld looks smoother off camera. So let's get the sunglasses off. There you go. Let's zoom out and then let's take it up close. You can see where I did a bit of a snake there coming off, but 
At the start there we've got quite a fine weld. We're looking at the weld furthest to the right. And then it goes back over to the left there. Big swing on it. <laughs> Pretty good I reckon. You know. I would say I'm just above novice level. I did a course in welding with oxyacetylene 15 years ago. So not recently. And this little trick I have on the bench, you can see it there. That's a speaker magnet, but any magnet will do. And that just holds your welding rods wherever you left them on the vise. I'm welding up on a vise today. So, oxyacetylene welding. Questions or comments, leave them below. If you want to tell me how I didn't do any of my gas safety checks, you may in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you later.